Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back today looking at a pen, another one, surprise. Some people think I only work on pen reels, but that, quite honestly, is a lot of what comes in. This is the Pen Squall 2. It's the 15SD. Uh, Robert brought this one over, and uh, we have a problem. The free spool release does not trigger this to free spool. Otherwise, it's running. From past experience, that tells me that I have a frozen uh, spool gear onto the spool itself, or a pinion gear, some like to call it. Probably Penn likes to call it that too. But at any rate, we're going to take this reel apart. We'll find out if that's the issue and we'll show you how to correct it. Sometimes you can get by with uh, uh, freeing it up. Sometimes it requires getting a replacement part. But most of the time it's because something got into the, uh, the reel, water usually, uh, salt, whatever, and uh, that's caused it to uh, corrode inside and lock up on those steel parts. And here's an example of this. Even though the reel is, is cared for externally, we've got salt on the threads of this uh, lockdown one. And uh, I need to remove that lockdown screw to take off the exterior parts. That's the way I like to start. And in this case, you've got to. You've got to get this side plate off. And getting the side plate off will lead us to that spool. And the first step of that is to take that locking screw off. So while I do that, I'd like to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody who's involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. You are our local hometown heroes and we appreciate everything you do, whether you're in the medical fields or in the support fields. Uh, thank you. Keeping us safe is what you do and you do so well. Appreciate your efforts. Well, we got a big screw that holds the handle on. That comes off with the pen wrench. This is an aftermarket pen wrench. This is the Allen Tanny wrench, but uh, it's a little bit thicker and a little bit longer for leverage. But that hole there will also fit the pen 4.0 uh, and 6.0 series, as well as some of the other larger wheels uh, that they make. Okay, so we're going to take the handle off. There's a little tension washer. This is a good time to tell you if you don't know this fishing reel, uh, go get the schematic that'll uh, kind of give you the blueprint for the reel. And also, take pictures along the way. Now, I'm taking pictures here as I take off the star adjuster. But uh, my pictures happen to be a movie, but you don't need to do movies. Uh, you can take a picture with a standing camera or a uh, cell phone or what have you. Notice the orientation as you take these off. There's a click mechanism that runs on the little grooves inside the track of this. And the... Uh, this is pointing upwards, so when you go to reinstall, make sure you have that upwards. Real easy to flip it downward, like that, just flipping it over. That could cause problems in terms of having the reel bind up or, or some other pieces to that. We have three washers next. We have a small uh, tension washer, then we have two larger tension washers. That's, those tension washers provide variability on the actual adjusting uh, star adjuster there. And that's, um, that's your choice. You can put them in different ways to either have a very limited amount of tension or a lot of tension on those. Your choice. They come from the factory face to face, which uh, I believe is kind of like the maximum tension you're going to get there. The rest of the reel we need to deal with is inside. We're going to take off the two mounting screws here and there's two screws behind. Normally I lay these on my desk to make sure that they're the same size, but uh, these have two different sizes, and you can tell by the screw head uh, that the smaller ones belong in the back here. And those are important to note when you go to reassembly. Sometimes it's not that significant, other times it's uh, very significant, and you just need to be aware of that. All right, this case should come off now. It does. We can tell that we've pretty much got an absolute mess inside of here. This reel has not been maintained in a while, so it's, even though it's nice ex on the exterior, the interior of this one, pretty tough. Notice that eccentric spring there. It's kind of an interesting load for this. You do want to make sure that it works because remember, we haven't been able to move this. It does move. And if you're not familiar with this reel, you kind of look at this reel and say, okay, where in the world do I put that other tag end of that eccentric spring well it belongs there on that little hump in case you're uh, curious. I'm going to flush this case out. I'm going to use a penetrating oil. 
In this case, I'm using a WD-40 to just kind of loosen that grease. It doesn't have to be WD-40. I, I have no uh, particular uh, preference in terms of the penetrating oils. WD-40 seems to work well, but if I don't have that, I use my local hard, hardware store or store brand of it. Just not that important. Put that case to the side for a moment. Now we're going to uh, get to the main gear. We're just going to check that out. The main gear has nothing to do with the, the issue at hand here, but we will do a service on this reel because it is so dirty. First thing I've done is press out the, the shaft. There's a burring on the back of the shaft that I want to oil. I'm using a fishing reel oil. In this case, it's Lucas fishing reel oil. Again, I don't care that much in terms of which oils you use. I do care an awful lot that you do use fishing reel oils. You'll see that uh, a lot of the stack of this uh, drag set came out. That's fine. Remember the order of it. If you don't remember the order of it, then what you can do is check the, uh, the schematic. It will show you the order there. We'll show it to you in just a moment. Just wiping off the excess grease on the main gear. We do have a back washer or a back drive here. It's important to pay attention to how it is. One's a rounded side, one's a flat side. The rounded side goes down. And it fits on that shaft um, with kind of that flat side up. Okay, next up then, we're going to rebuild the inside of this case. Check the, the gear, make sure that that gear is clean teeth. You can use a brush, I use a hard brush, just kind of a, a dollar store variety, it's nothing fancy. You can use a toothbrush if you like. Uh, the important part of this is to keep that, uh, get the debris and any old grease out of the channel. Once you do that, go ahead and put some fresh grease on there. I'm using Penn's Precision Wheel Grease for this. I, again, I really don't have a preference. I, I like the pen grease. I work on a lot of pen reels, but that's not the reason. It comes in, one of the reasons is it comes in a one pound tub. So I'm not constantly buying these little two ounce containers. Instead of having eared washers, they have a drag washer that actually has the ears on it. They hold this main gear to the formation when we do this. And then this was upside down, so next one in then is a collar. Probably should put the collar on first. The collar sits on the main gear. We have a washer that's, we would have called that a um, keyed washer in the past. It's got a uh, rectangular structure that it holds to. Now these drag washers do not be, need to be greased. You can grease them, and if you do grease them, you can use something like a Cal's Universal Grease to do that. Second of the washers, last of the main washers. And then this one goes up. There's a bell on this. Two of those slots fit over that um, metal insert there, the collar, and two of those are going to be grabbed by the stud that's coming through the back of the, um, the case here, and actually you can push that. Oh, we're going to just leave that there, but those two we're going to find the other empty hole. We've got the mess here, and my belief is that this is frozen to the spool. That's why this is not working. So what we want to do next is to remove the jack. We do that by pulling up. And we have screws that are holding on the, um, the yoke assembly. Oops, just as I'm looking at this now, the, uh, this belongs underneath. I don't know how that came loose, but we'll just make that adjustment right now. Now, I use a parts tray. Generally, I'll put the parts right in there, but I guess I just uh, kind of had that one fall off to the side. Oops, did it wrong anyway. So that goes underneath. Let's get this reset. 
and you have your bottom washer keyed flat side out and we have that little hard washer there and then we can put that rest of the assembly that we just finished in there make sure it all locks tight just like that and set that off to the side there's a lot of stuff on this uh, jack so we'll get that cleaned to the pail. We have two small Phillips head screws holding on the yoke assembly. Take those off. Be careful with these. If they shoot, they're hard to find. You're going to have to order new. I'm going to take the screw and the, and the spring off. Do that on the other side. Note that when you work with this collar, that the collar has a open side and a, uh, and a closed side and the clo open side goes up. This is just pulled out of the spool shaft and this is our problem. We have a we have a spool or a pinion gear that's locked on to the shaft. And as I mentioned that happens frequently more so than you might think and the, the issue is usually that waters come in here and uh, cause that to seize. So we're going to work on that. I'm going to get a little adjustable wrench, or I'm going to find the right wrench for this. I don't think I have a small enough one. We're going to shut that off. We have square sides here, square shoulder. This one's going to help me a lot. Square shoulders here. I'm just going to find a small adjustable wrench. We're going to heat the shaft the shaft and the gear will expand at different rates that will free up the rust inside. To help free up the rust, while I go look for that small adjustable reel, I'm just going to flood this with some more penetrating oil. I'll let that sit on the bench. I'll clean up the yoke. I think we'll be able to save this one. We'll see. The uh, importance here, of course, is that we don't damage this side of it. If you needed to wrench something, you'd probably get away with this side uh, because that doesn't have an effect, but we're going to try and do it with a wrench so that I don't uh, damage any of the threading on this. I'm going to turn this off for a moment, find that adjustable wrench, and be right back. Okay, so we've gone out. I was looking for an adjustable wrench. I actually found a small wrench. It's part of a, a set of uh, ignition wrenches. And uh, this one happens to be 15 64ths, but it fits perfect. So the next step involves heat. That's why you see the butane tank in the back here. It's a plumber's torch. We're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to first we're going to make sure that we're protected. So please, among all things else, you got heat. Make sure you protect yourself. I'm going to grab a little channel lock pliers couple of kitchen scrubbies so that I don't scar any of the metal. And I'm going to put that padding on the spool shaft here. That's so that I can hold the spool shaft when it heats up. I'm just trying to find the right adjustment for this. I want to be able to hold that firm without getting burned. So. Uh, Again, if you're not comfortable with this, please don't try this. But I want to hold it firm. I have padding so that I don't scar the shaft. I have a wrench here now that I should be able to help manipulate the piece once the metals expand. So the next part then is to define the heat. using a plumber's torch and I'm going to heat this and generally you'll see some bubbling going on here okay that, that should do it it doesn't take much and we'll see if we're able to turn this gear now now be careful it's very hot hold to one side turn the other and you can see that the gear is starting to turn now. 
That's the important part. So what's happening when you don't get in the free spool is this gear wasn't turning. And when that gear failed to turn, what happened was the you couldn't pull that gear in and out. So we're just going to work on this. Here you go. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Keep turning it one way, turn it the other way. That'll generally break it up. Use the right wrench. I think we pretty much have it now. There you go. So we're off. So you can see the evidence now of uh, just why this was seized up. There's all kinds of rust and junk and like on there. And uh, that's because water got in. That gear sat. You had the internal rusting going on. And eventually it just seized up probably in storage. This is still hot. I'm going to take a... Uh, a little bit of steel wool to, to start trying to get some of that corrosion off there. It should work out pretty easily. You can see it cleans up nicely, but that is just enough where this doesn't work. Now I have to take a break because that other gear is hot. and I'm not going to play around with that. I'm going to let this axle shaft cool down. I'm going to let that pinion gear cool down. We'll clean out the ridges in this gear. You can see that there's a lot of old grease accumulated in here. We'll go in and we'll clean out the inside of this pinion gear because the problem with this is that it rusted on the inside, not the outside. And as we mentioned, there's a lot of, of stuff here. But the good news was we didn't have to touch these channels on this gear the pliers or anything to pull it up and that's going to save this gear so we should be able to reuse this and when we clean out the interior here we should be able to do fine now that's still hot so i'm going to just stand this up carefully i'm going to load that up with some penetrating oil and we'll be back after that thing cools down and I will finish this wheel. Okay, so it's been a little while. It's cooled down. Not completely cool, but it is. I've taken the, the spool gear and a cotton swab and just worked that through so that I could get the, the uh, debris and the like from the interior. We still have a little bit of uh, work to do here. So I'm going to grab a hard brush and we'll just clean the remainder of that pinion here. And then we'll just set ourselves up to do the rest of this now. So we have the shaft, we have the pinion gear, we've cleaned off the surface just to recap. Let's go ahead and just put this on, make sure that we spin. Well there you go, that's what it should be doing. And uh, still just a little bit coming out of that gear, so let's get that done. We'll put a a little bit of grease onto the shaft. The grease will prevent that from seizing up like that again. But this is what's going to happen. The yolk's going to pull it out, give you a free spool, and then when you uh, come back in, you'll get the balance of that. So, all important to do. That's what you need to do. Just work that stuff free. Speaking of working free, we got to get this stuff cleared off of this side so we'll come back in here a little bit of penetrating oil I don't recommend penetrating oil as a lubricant but I think it's a wonderful degreaser and that's why I use it in all kinds of these situations here you saw me kind of using it to free up before the uh, we use the heat on this among other things and uh, now we just want to get all of that out of here again cotton swabs are a good Good way to get done with that as well. And we're just going to go ahead now and finish that up. This is the grease on this case uh, has no particular value to it. It's probably been thrown off by the main gears and the like. We will regrease that um, the jack section up there. All right, before I go and reassemble that side, there's four screws on this side. Let's go ahead and just pull the spool out. We'll make sure that the back end of this is serviced. And then we'll go ahead and reassemble the reel. We'll see if we can restore that free spool function. I'm certain we will. This is a problem that's not uncommon to pen reels. 
I've found an awful lot of time with pen jig masters and I've actually done a separate video on that. It happens less frequently with uh, some of the other pen wheels but it does happen on occasion so if you don't have a free spool just check to make sure that it's the pinning gear that's frozen to the shaft. All right. Go off with that piece. That's just a trim ring. We have a, uh, a mag set up on this one. I'm going to pull that spool now. We have bearings on both sides. We can flood them. I like this Lucas because of the, the tip. And you just can generally can just pull right off. Well, I get the long reach tip. I'm not going to fool around too much with that. But you can do it that way. Just check the inside of the case while you have it open. Make sure it's clean. This one's been taken care of on the outside, so it's kind of a surprise when you find that you have that frozen spool issue uh, on the inside. All right, so enough done there. Align your holes. Have those four screws, get those back in. And then we can move on to putting the rest of the wheel down. So if you like this kind of a video, if you like kind of the hobby or art or fun of wheel repair, oops, then uh, I would ask you to subscribe. And if you subscribe, uh, if you hit that notification button, it's going to uh, let you know when I'm making new videos. And uh, you can follow the work that I do. It's probably it's basically an over-the-shoulder look on my workbench of how I how I diagnose and repair fishing wheel issues. As I mentioned, I'm not just uh, here to work on pen wheels, but I'm on the north uh, northeast Atlantic seaboard, and a lot of fishing that we do involves saltwater fishing, and that's Penn's specialty. And so I see a lot of them, and a lot of folks like to uh, see the work that I do on their reels, so we wind up with videos of a lot of pen reels. But I work on uh, all kinds of saltwater, freshwater, and uh, everything in between fishing reels, and I work on uh, every type, conventional, spinning, bait casting, and so on. So subscribing is a great way to see that. If you have a question on any reel, and I uh, would like to uh, know more and uh, ask those questions and I will be happy to, to answer them. Leave your questions in the comments section. All right, I don't have a spin on this right now. I'm thinking I should, so I come back here and just see what may, may, have, may have affected that. Probably not having the spool shaft in cause that to be canted. There we go. Here now I have a spin, so I feel better about that. All right. I'm not getting ahead of ourselves, but we are getting this done. Tighten those trim ring screws. It's always good to check your progress along the way. There's no sense uh, continuing if that spool wasn't uh, done properly. All right, we know this comes in and out now. That's always a good thing. So let's go ahead and put that side back in then. So we know that we had the yoke assembly and the shoulder is up. If you didn't, you can go back to your pictures and get the reference point there. I'll put that onto my pinion gear. We know we need a little bit of grease here for that jack. So let's put the jack in there, grease the slides. So the jack points outward with those two uh, ramps. It's going to push the uh, yoke assembly forward and detach the pinion gear from the main or from the spool. We had a little bit of grease. May, may have worn off or got absorbed or whatever in the process here. So let's go ahead and make sure that we put that back properly. Turn that gear to make sure that it's there. Bring the jack to the upright position so that this is under the shoulders. And then we have the two springs that screw in. So one at a time, 
doesn't matter which one goes first. And be careful, there's springs, so as they compress while you're doing this uh, reinstall here, they may shoot. So just be careful and make sure that they're tight. If they're not tight and something works loose, it's going to get into the gearing. So these need to be tightened down. Here's the spring and the screw all in, all in one here. The shaft is still a little hot. Interesting. It's been 15 minutes, but it seems like we still have a little bit of heat left in that. That's okay. Just be aware of it. Okay, that's in. Next step then is to put the main gear assembly in. We've already greased that. We've taken care of all of the uh, actions there. That just needs to get seated. Give it a spin. Make sure that that works fine. And then we're going to uh, grab that cover next. I'm just looking to make sure all the pieces and parts that are in my tray belong outside the tray. Okay, we've cleaned it up. We're going to have to work on matching that uh, that stud there to the open studs. They look like they're at about 1 o'clock. I'm going to set this to noon and 6. Set the opening here to noon and 6. That should be enough to get that done. The other piece we're going to have to work on is getting the stud into the hole for the jack. The hole for the jack is currently up, so move your eccentric over to the upside. It's got to fit into this spot here when you mount that side case. Okay, let's see if we can get this to come together now. I think I'm going to push this through. There we go. So that just took a little bit of a moment. There's square shoulders on that that you have to work on. Look at that. Hmm, how do you like that? It works. All right, let's put those screws back in. We'll tighten this down and uh, we'll see how we do. Remember we had the two larger screws with the front plate screws. And then we had the two smaller screws which went in the back. So if you have a real like uh, Rick did, uh, Robert did here, and uh, it needs to be repaired, well, I repair by uh, mail in addition to repairing by uh, folks that drop the reels off. And uh, if you're interested in that, I can, I can provide you some real repair information you send me an email, the address on the business card that follows. Email is the best. There's folks that try to call and I'm in my shop working or doing videos or doing other things during the day and the calls uh, don't get returned as promptly as a, an email. With the email I can certainly provide an answer within 24 hours. Uh, as I mentioned, I typically will check comments and emails. Uh, in the morning before I uh, kind of start my routine. So uh, if you have a question, email is the best way to do it. If you're like uh, repair information, same thing. All right, so the, all of the case screws are in. I'm happy to see that we've got that working. 
And I just know that as I just was ready to turn out, not being in free spool, that my main gear is turning, so everything is lining up properly. We had the two big uh, tension washers, as I mentioned. They are bell-shaped, and these are going face-to-face. -face. So those two bells went next. And we had this, and again, if you've lost your track here, then you go into your pictures or the schematic to see how this stacks. You have the side plate there. Remember what we said about this one? The click was facing up. If you tried to put it on the other way, there's a chance that it wouldn't work and it would jam the wheel. Next up then is our star adjuster. Right about there, it's going to try and clear that little point on the click. So use your handle. There you go, just cleared the handle. Lost the little adjuster washer underneath. Not a big deal. Use the handle for leverage when you need it. It's a lot easier than trying to power through something. Just tightening down the drag now. Have that little spacer there. Have our hand. Well, tension washer goes between there as well. And the handle goes. You had it on the, uh, the low one. This is a leverage handle. You can go high and low with this. If you want more leverage, you can move it to the back square here. That square reminds me that other pen handles do not fit this reel. The other handles have a uh, rectangle shape. And we saw a little salt uh, accumulation in there, so make sure that you spray that in addition to spraying the screw to make sure that you're down with that. Tighten up that handle screw now. Adjust your drag washer a little more. And then we'll give it our final test. But one, put that hold down screw, which is how we started this. And then we'll uh, give it a test to make sure that it's mission accomplished. You need to align the scallop in the nut with that hole so that you can get your little tie down screw in. And we should be set. There we go. All right, time to test it out. So we're in, in gear right now when we're doing fine. We've cleaned up all of the dirt. Let's make sure that we have that free spool. The lever turns easily, the, the free spool moves. And that's how to free it up if you had that situation. If you have a, a pinion gear that is frozen onto the shaft, you're going to need to use heat. You're going to need to be patient. You need to be careful because you are using the heat. But at the end of the day, on this one, at least we were able to save both the gear and the shaft. And uh, nothing needed replacement, just needed a good cleaning in order to, uh, to accomplish that. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please stay safe, stay well. Again, a special thanks to our first responders. Stay vigilant, out of harm's way. Stay fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.